Today on the Towson Lacrosse Report, we'll review the Tigers game against the University of Delaware. Get ready, Tiger fans. The Tiger Lacrosse Report starts now. Unlimited data from AT&T means you could stream it all. Like that Anthony Michael Hall movie where he fights with the girl. The one where he gets rejected by the girl. Even stream the one where he creates the girl. Uh, with unlimited data, you can stream all the Anthony Michael Hall movies you want. Hmm. I wonder what he's up to these days. Oh, well, maybe he's shopping at an AT&T store. Get unlimited data and your fourth line free when you have AT&T Wireless and Direct TV. Plus, get up to $650 in credits to help you switch. How long does it take to change the game of basketball? Days, years, decades. How about 0.4 seconds? All of a sudden, big ain't so big no more. Small ain't so small. The step back three is the new dunk. Follow through is the new poster. Range is the new hang time. How long to change the game of basketball? One second or less. White Market's ice cream plant is based in Sunbury, Pennsylvania, and locally owned and operated. We've been making our ice cream for nearly 50 years. We create roughly 70 flavors of ice cream right now. We use local ingredients, especially our cream, which is from our milk plant. The cream is what gives our, our ice cream a rich and creamy texture. Now together with our customers, uh, we've created a, a product called Peanut Butter Indulgence, which will be coming out this summer. It's a peanut butter ice cream with sea salt caramel swirl and chocolate covered pretzel. How could you go wrong with that? Personally, I love our ice cream. If you come to our house at any given time, you'll find at least five packages of ice cream in our freezer. Uh, our kids grew up eating wise quality ice cream and now we get to treat our grandchildren to it. It's been a pleasure for me to be tasting ice cream for over 40 years to Wise Markets and, and I'm loving every minute of it. Hello and welcome to the Tiger Lacrosse Report. I'm your host, Spiro Marikas. The Tigers welcomed the University of Delaware into Johnny United Stadium this past Saturday, and the Tigers lost to the Blue Hens by a score of 10 to 7. Let's take a look at the highlights or lowlights from the game.
The Tigers are now 10-2 and two overall and 2-1 and one in the CAA. And as always, I'm joined by the head coach of the Tigers, Sean Nadlin. Coach, before we get into the game, it was uh, Military Appreciation Day. And I know that was very important for you and the team. It was. It was a, a great day, you know, minus the, the score and the outcome for Towson and lacrosse. Um, but to, to see all the fans there, to see the military people in attendance and, and their families and just the, the festival atmosphere to, to show our support and to, to create that environment to, to show our uh, appreciation of the military and the acknowledgments that we had as well as the, uh, the helmets that we donned uh, for the game. It was really, I thought it went great, you know, in regards to, to that aspect and really showing our appreciation of all the military personnel and their families out there and uh, wish we could have helped them out with a with a win from Towson, but you know, I know they had a great day. Wish we would have heard more cannons going off, huh? Absolutely. As they were shooting cannons every time the Tigers scored. All right, the game started and, and I mean six seconds in, boom. Delaware scores as uh, Haveda, the faceoff man, wins the faceoff, goes straight down, scores a goal. Before you knew it, the, the Tigers were down three to nothing. Yeah. Um <laughs> Five nothing. Well, not five nothing, but you know they scored in their first five shots, which was uh, an issue for our defense right off the bat. Um, you know, I don't know if we were too too hyped up for the game, too anxious, too um, you know energized, and just not really focused. You know, there's there's a fine balance there, and I think our team was definitely on, on the wrong end of that balance, uh, obviously, uh, with our early performance, uh, especially defensively, we're off kilter, and then uh, defensively, I meant. We were off kilter and didn't really have an answer for it, you know, with regards to why. And um, I know Tyler didn't, you know, start strong in the cage. A couple of them he should have got a stick on, um, you know. And then defensively, we were just off a mess. And you know, it's just something that you know can't point your finger at. It was a total team uh, issue uh, to start the game, and unfortunately, we couldn't string enough together throughout the game to, to get back on track. Alec Berkeley really had a tough time at the face-off circle, and then you brought in uh, Stillwell, and he did, a, he did a really good job. Was it just the matchup with Alec? Uh, Alec, um, I'm kind of kicking myself in Alec starting the game. He, he struggled in practice Thursday, Friday. Steve really was playing well and sharp. Uh, I gave Alec the benefit of the doubt and started him. Probably something uh, you know, I shouldn't have done. You know, given, I should have given Steve an opportunity to, to get out there, get out front, because I felt he was really focused, really competing at a high level and playing well. Um, you know, Alec, had, you know, in my eyes, had earned that opportunity to, to still get out there and, and do it. You know, put us in a hole, unfortunately. Um, but we expect Alec to, to rebound and get back after it. And both those guys are, you know, competing at a high level, which is good for us. Well, yeah, the, the one thing you saw is that, that Stillwell did a really nice job for you on the face-off, so that's something mm -hmm. you got in your back pocket going down the road. Absolutely, and Stillwell's a strong face-off guy, you know, in regards to, to, to just pure strength, not just technique. Uh, his weakness is in his ability to, to what he does if he gets the ball and what he's going to do after that, which he's, he's improved upon. Now he needs to continue to improve upon it and be much more consistent, being able to get the ground ball, being able to make the right play with it, you know, and, and be able to, to keep possession going our way. Even though Delaware jumped off to that big lead, you guys cut it to 6-4 to four at halftime. So at halftime, you know, no, you're not happy that you're losing, but you were right there and, 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 and you had a chance in the second half. Absolutely, and that's what we com uh, communicated to the guys. As ugly as that first half felt, and, and it, was, it was, you know, very bad from our perspective, you know, to only be down two goals to a team that came out flying, a team that came out ready to go in Delaware, you know, we were pretty fortunate. You know, but the challenge for us was to be able to come out of that locker room in the third quarter, be able to, to really, you know, get on the field, play to our ability and level. We had opportunities, we had chances throughout the, the stretch of the third quarter. We just couldn't capitalize on it, unfortunately. And the offense, you had scored double-digit goals in five straight games. You only came up with seven against a Delaware team that at times had not looked great on defense throughout the year. What was it offensively that wasn't working? Uh, poor shooting. You know, really was a huge indicator there. I think we missed the cage upwards of 14 to, to maybe 16 shots off cage. And, um, you know, their goalie made, I think, upwards of 11 to 12 saves and, um, you know, only having seven goals. You know, you can't score if you don't put the ball on net. And we are very selfish with some of our selection of shots. Uh, and when we did get shots off, uh, we didn't, you know, put them on net and we didn't put them in good spots. Um, a lot of them high, you know, which was something we tried to get away from or communi communicate in regards to staying away from um, and, and made it really an easy day. Even though he made a couple of nice saves, uh, made it an easy day uh, for their goalie. 
Well, the Tigers, luckily, they've got another game this week and try to bounce back. That will do it for us here on the Tiger Lacrosse Report. Join us next time on TowsonTigers.com, where Coach Nadlin and I will preview the Tigers game against the Stags of Fairfield. For head coach Sean Nadlin, I'm Spiro Marikas. Have a great week, and go Tigers!